and you've just heard Shelf Life from Lou McLean, which is out on the 24th of January, which is this Monday. And I'm so pleased to be joined by Lou now. Hello, Lou. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Um, thanks for taking the time to have a chat. First of all, what can you tell us about Shelf Life? Um, so the idea for the song came from one of the songwriting exercises that we do in the Girls Rock School Song Circle. Um, we'll pick an object um, and, and kind of write about it for 10 minutes. Um, and I can't even remember what the object was now, but um, one of the girls um, had mentioned a shelf yeah. and best before dates and something in my head just clicked and I thought shelf life. I was like, wouldn't it be interesting to explore the idea of kind of objectification and getting older and kind of use it as a use kind of shelf life or best before dates to sort of explore that. And that's that just I thought that that sounds interesting. So I went away and tried to write about it. And it's a really interesting, we'll talk a little bit more about the song circle because I think what you do there is really interesting. But um shelf life for those who kind of know your music, it's more pop than well, it seems to me it's a more of a pop song than previously. Is that fair? Absolutely. Um, I think in, so I got into music a little bit kind of later on in my life um, and the songs that I've written in my head, they always sound very poppy, um, you know, with my punk influences, with sort of folky influences as well, but um, during the pandemic I was able to um, learn a little bit about production, a little bit about um, you know piano and keyboards and just exploring other instruments and also exploring collaboration. So this song kind of started off as a bit of a dreamy sort of piano. It's the first song that I've written on piano actually. It started off as a sort of more dreamy um, piano thing and then um, Berta Kennedy um, was looking for collaborators so I sent it along to her and kind of told her a bit more about my pop my secret pop life <laughs> that I have that goes on in my head um, and she managed to create this which was yeah magical and amazing so yeah really happy with it actually. It's interesting that you worked with Bertha Kennedy because she's someone who does seem to collaborate with some really excellent musicians and the results are always fantastic. How was it working with her? It was really, it was really strange actually because I didn't meet her in person until after it was all finished. I went to see her play at uh, Sneaky Pete's um, before Christmas, um, and but it was really, really easy to work with her, and it was my first collaboration ever, um, really. So she was very kind to me and sort of <laughs> helped me through the process. But she's amazingly talented and just. Um, a really nice person all around so um it was very easy to collaborate with her and and um yeah she just had some amazing ideas so um uh, yeah it was good it felt very straightforward and is there a plan to work together again or is this a kind of one-off or do you not know yet don't really know yet like i'd like to work with it again in the future um at the moment i've got a couple of other collaborations going on um i'm working with jen athen um, who's another Scottish um, singer, songwriter and producer on another track that's sort of a little bit similar to Shelf Life thematically. Um, and I'm also um, collaborating with uh, Ashley Steen from Fisty Muffs, if you know them, they're quite a funky band um, as well at the moment. So just, I'm really open to collaborating with anyone, to be honest, because um, I'm finding that that's, really sparking my creativity and just exploring what other people can bring to my songs. Yeah. Um, now, Julian, uh, I think your last release was Lockdown in Leith, wasn't it, your, your EP? And I was wondering if music, it sounds like it was, but if it was vital to you during that kind of lockdown period. Yeah, music's vital to me um, as a way of expressing my feelings and sort of working out my emotions. Um, at the best of times, so um, having that, <laughs> having that to sort of go to um, in lockdown was, yeah, vital is is the right word to describe it. I think um, it was, um, it gives me, it gave me an opportunity to sort of express emotions that I didn't quite fully understand, um, and also 
Uh, it gave me an avenue to learn new things and find new ways of expressing myself and using that creativity. Um, in a way, it's like, obviously, it was not nice to be able to, to, to not be able to meet up with people and not be able to play gigs and have that sense of community. Like, that was the bad part of it. But the good side of it was it did give me a chance to develop my skills a lot more and sort of creatively um, try out different things, which normally... I don't have as much time for, unfortunately, but yeah, um, it, it was definitely a thing for me to, yeah, it really helped me, I think is what I'm trying to say. Well, I think it's really interesting, you know, um, it shows you why music and art and, and whatever, you know, is so important because you've, you've got the tools to be able to express yourself and kind of make sense of something that everyone has been going through and a lot of people don't have those tools or at least they think they don't and you know no one's ever said to them go and write a poem go and write a short story go and write a song mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um and for a long time um, like I said earlier like I didn't get into music until I was um, a little bit older so um for a long time I didn't have that avenue of you know of using writing and music and more recently um I've been making art like collages and stuff um so having those avenues to express that is so important to me and then um, encouraging other people to be able to use that is important to me too. But what is quite cool as well is um, when people listen to your music, I didn't kind of think about that extra part, but it's like a lot of the times people will come up to me and say, oh, that song like really resonated with me or, or that one, oh, I've had something like that happen to me. Um, and you don't, well, I didn't really consider that the things that I write to help me understand my feelings actually help other people to understand their feelings um, so that is really nice like that's the extra bonus I think of of being able to make art. Well I think particularly with the songs on uh, a lockdown and leaf that's what I felt it was like oh yeah that's kind of what I mean, even if it wasn't specifically the same thing the kind of general feel uh, of what was happening you know was kind of universal and, and, and came around and you, before we started talking you were saying that you haven't toured these songs like you would normally or played them live or whatever. And does that make a difference to how you view them? Yes, it does. Because actually, like, I've found that um, every so often, you know, if I'm sitting here practicing or just kind of whatever, sometimes I'll just pick up the guitar and I'll play what comes to mind. And whenever one of those ones comes up, like it's usually, it is actually usually the world is on fire or adventures in vulnerability. I like playing those ones for whatever reason, because they're nice, they're fun to sing as well. Because I've really, I really worked out how to let myself go <laughs> vocally in that, and writing that EP um, and performing it. But yeah, actually I find myself getting quite emotional sometimes. Um, whereas I think if you're used to playing them, the songs sort of evolve over time um, and, and you start to pick up different bits of meaning even when you're playing them to other people or how people react to them. But they still very much feel like they're quite raw. Yeah. I think. Because they yeah. haven't been developed in the way that you're saying. And it's interesting yeah. if you are, you know, playing them and finding new meaning in them. Are you ever surprised when people come up to you and say, oh, I think this was like that? And you're like, oh, I would never have thought that. Yeah, quite quite a few times I've had it as well. <laughs> um, one example just springs to mind is um, I wrote this. I've not recorded it, but I will at some point because I do like it. But um, I, 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 I can't even remember Wait, what am I trying to say. There was one song in particular my friend um, was talking about it. And she was like, God, that just breaks my heart when you sing that one line. Um, because it obviously means this, and this is a person who knows me and is you know, one of my best friends, and she got it totally wrong. <laughs> I was like that's not what it's about, babe. Like you know, <laughs> and she was kind of like, oh, oh, I feel so silly. But then I went away and reflected on it, and I was like, mm, actually, I think she might be right. Like maybe it was a little bit about that, but you know, sometimes what's really interesting about songwriting and it comes up in this in the song circle as well um, so it's not a unique thing to me but um sometimes you'll be playing a song that you wrote a year previously or months previously and you'll suddenly realize oh that was about that wasn't about what I thought I was writing about so it's like your subconscious kind of 
does things before you're ready to <laughs> acknowledge that that's actually how you felt about something. Oh, um, man, that's really interesting. It's so interesting. It's also quite scary <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. you're not consciously doing something and then you're like, oh, actually, wow. Um, but hey, ho, it's all part of the magic, I think. Well, let's talk a little bit about Song Circle and particularly what you did during the pandemic. Uh, which I think has been kind of acknowledged. For people that don't know, can you tell us what it is? Yeah, so um, Girls Rock School Edinburgh is an organisation that um, women and non-binary people can come and learn how to play instruments, um, usually over a six-week term. Um, and in Edinburgh specifically, it's over 18s, um, whereas in Glasgow and some of the other places, it's for under 18s. So, um, I joined that in about 2015 um, and then a couple of years later I was asked to do a songwriting um, workshop um, for the girls which was really nice it was a bit of a full circle moment so I loved that um, but at this very first one that I did there was maybe about six of us who attended and we had such a good time we're like maybe we should just meet up every month after um, and then we can just have this little circle of people who write songs and sort of encourage each other and have that feedback um, and then four and a bit years almost five years later it's still going strong we're still meeting monthly um, so it's a really good space for us all just to support each other and encourage each other and just hang out with other songwriters and do songwriting exercises and talk about all the mad stuff <laughs> like your subconscious playing tricks on you when you're writing and you know making you feel like oh, okay this isn't just me that this happens to and yeah so it's pretty good um but during the pandemic obviously we couldn't meet up um so we started meeting just on zoom um, and sort of modified um the sessions a little bit to make them a bit more online friendly I suppose um, and yeah we just started we ended up meeting every two weeks instead just because you know what it was like <laughs> you, you were just um, I think we all needed that extra little bit of support and um, and activity really for something to do so yeah it's been really really it's been a massive help for me and and the other um, people yeah. who are involved too. Oh, fantastic so do you have other plans for 2022 that you can share with us? I know you love to play live. Are you managing to go out and do that? Do you know, I've not planned any gigs yet. Um, I will, but I think there's part of me that's sort of like, I don't want the disappointment of organising something. Because that happened to me quite a few times last year that I had things that were booked and was waiting to announce. And then it all kind of fell to the wayside. So um, and I'm really enjoying doing my collaborations as well at the moment, so I'm sort of just focusing on that now, but I would love, hopefully if there's festivals in the summer, I would love to do some festivals again, um, even just even just to go, <laughs> even if I'm not playing, I will be attending. <laughs> but um, no, like I'm kind of, I'm getting um, a new set together um, I'm writing sort of more songs that are similar to the sort of vibe that shelf life is um, and also doing a little bit I've got another collaboration that I've not started yet but I'm quite excited about it. I can't really say much about it in case it doesn't happen but um, <laughs> you know that way yeah. but yeah I'm working on my collaborations um, I want to do um, I would quite like to put another EP out or maybe a wee album at some point, but I think by the end of this year, that might be a little bit ambitious to have an album, but, um, but I've definitely got a lot of songs that I need to record. So I'm going to try and focus on getting them all in little groups together and getting them recorded um, in the way that, yeah, that I can share with other people. Fantastic. Look forward to all of that. Well, Lou, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's really nice to be able to just talk music. <laughs> and this <laughs> is Lou McLean and The World Is On Fire from Lockdown in Leith.